Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to install DWM on Ubuntu. This works on other Debian-based distributions. In fact, I'll, pro I'll have some uh, distribution-specific instructions for Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and Debian for one of these steps, but the process is the same. Uh, just about for each of those distributions. So, compared to my last video where I downloaded the tarball from Suckless's website and ran the make make install script from the make file, this method is actually the recommended way for um, for most purposes on Debian based distribution. So again, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Debian, so on. And it also contains, since it's on their repositories, it also contains uh, a couple extra things that you'd want for a uh, for DWM. So for example, in your display manager, so like your login screen, you can choose to make a DWM session over a GNOME one. So this is a lot more user-friendly way of doing it. And um, this tutorial assumes that you're a little bit newer to Linux. I'll explain things we're doing as we're going along. Um, I think that's everything. So first thing you want to do is open a terminal. So this is a brand new um, Ubuntu installation, 1204. The only change that I made was I installed Vim, which is a text editor. You don't need that. Um, you can use Nano instead if it ever comes up. You can um, even use the graphical user interface one. Uh, I think it's mousepad. Or no. Um, is it get it? Yeah, it's get it. I haven't used Ubuntu or Gnome in so long. But anyway, open a terminal. And first thing you want to do is um, run this command. sudo apt install apt dash source. And what that'll do is that will run as super user, so if you're coming from Windows, run as administrator basically, apt the package manager, you can think of it as kind of like an app store. So if we can tell our package manager to install app source. Now enter your password, and I already, already installed this to save some time. Um, but you'll get a prompt say yes or no, hit, hit enter to install it, it'll take a second. But this lets you download source packages from the Ubuntu repositories, or Linux Mint repositories if you're using that, or Debian repositories if you're using that. So now that we've done that, we can install source packages and build them and compile them from the official repositories. But the first thing we have to do is on Ubuntu systems, we have to look up software and or software and updates and enable the source repositories yeah so under this first tab Ubuntu software tick off source code put in your password and hit close it's gonna ask you to reload tap reload give it a second I'm going to pause while this finishes. So my Linux Mint might look a little bit different because I'm using the XFCE version, but to do this on Linux Mint, you want to look up software sources, password, and enable source code repositories. Once that's done, 
Okay. And let it update the cache. The rest of the process is the same between the two distributions. And if you're running Debian, you already have the software, or sorry, the uh, source code repositories enabled by default. Once you have the source code repositories enabled, open your terminal if you closed it. <laughs> It'd help if I unpaused it, wouldn't it? Yeah, open your terminal if you've closed it. Um, and log in as as super user. So super user is basically God mode administrator login. And the easy way to do this on Ubuntu and Linux Mint, because you have sudo installed by default, sudo su, sudo login super user, dash, so use the root's home directory, enter password, and now we are root. To do this on Debian, you can leave out the sudo part, sudo space, dash, my bad, let me zoom in for you, sudo space dash, and enter in your root password that you signed when you're installing Debian. So now that we have that done, we can now app source install, actually, before we do that, so app source is going to download all the source code and stuff for to, to compile a package, but it's going to put it wherever in whatever directory we're in right now. And I don't want to have all these packages strewn about my root my root user's home folder. So I want to make a directory and I'm going to call it source packages. Then I'm going to change directory cd into source packages apt source install dwm. Actually, whoops. Before you do that, app source update and then install DWM to make sure the source code repositories are up to date. Although you probably do not have to do that because that should have been updated when. Um, when you take when you enable the source code repositories in the GUI. Also when you install a package through app source, it'll also install the dependencies you need to build uh, to build and run it. So that's all the stuff being installed right now. It's all stuff we need to make sure DWM not only runs but also can be compiled. I apologize for all the pausing during the video. My Wi-Fi out here is not very good right now, so. Also, GNOME eats a lot of resources, and I did not give a lot of resources to this virtual machine because I'm on a laptop. It's not exactly, uh, it doesn't have the most resources to give up. But anyway, um, now that we have DWM quote unquote installed, um, type ls and we can see the list of files in our directory right now. You can see we have a bunch of DWM files. All right. So if we were to change directory into DWM, we can see all of the um, the entire source code to DWM, right? Including some things that Debian has. Um, included with our copy of DWM, including DWM.desktop, which will let us select DWM 
in our display manager, so in our login screen, which will make switching to DWM easier uh, in the future. Now, change directory, so cd space dot dot, back to source packages, so you're not inside DWM, the DWM folder, and run apt source build DWM. And this will tell app source to start compiling DWM because I don't have any changes I want to make right now. And just make sure everything works. You're going to want to build and install it. Sorry, build and install it through dpackage. Um, because app source, when you build, not only compiles it, but it also makes the .deb file that your package manager itself can use to install and manage the package for you. So this will take only a second. DWM is very small, less than 2,000 lines of code, which for a window manager is extremely tiny. I think there's a, I think like DWM runs like under like around five megabytes in RAM once it's uh, up and running. So we can see here now we have DWM underscore 6.1 dash 5 da, da, da. now the latest version I forgot to mention this the latest version of DWM is 6.2 but for some reason as of right now October 15th 2000 or yeah 2020 it's still only 6.1 in the repos I don't know why it's not that big of a deal but it's a little bit annoying but um, to install this DWM package we just built you want to run dpackage dash dash install dot forward slash so for uh, from the current directory dwm and hit tab to autocomplete and we can hit enter and this will install dwm take only a second and we're done and just for giggles, do I have HTOP installed? No. Let me just do a comparison here for later. So I said before, only have four gigs or so of RAM allocated to this machine, and I believe two cores. And GNOME eats a lot of those cores, a lot of those resources, just because it's massive. It's quite frankly very bloated. Um, it's not a bad environment, it's just a little too heavy for me. And you can see, um, have like, um, about 8.6 gigs in use. Just the terminal open and nothing else. Both my cores are idling around 10, 15%. I'd say about average. It's going up for some reason. And, um, let's see here. What we're going to do now is we're going to log out. And once you do that, you will see in the bottom right, um, hold on. You'll see in the bottom right this gear, and now when you click it, you can swap to DWM instead of, it's called Ubuntu here, but it's actually GNOME, I don't know why it's called Ubuntu, but you can now switch to DWM, log in, and it'll drop you into your new DWM environment, which is very bare bones by default. But, um, yeah, we're not even using, like, half the memory now. Because all that was being, almost all that's been used by GNOME. Their CPU is idling a little bit lower, too. But, um, yeah, that's how, that's 
that's the preferred way of installing DWM on Debian-based distros, like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Debian, and the like. So uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment, and uh, I'll try to get back to you on them.